time for another Church Key pilgrimage where we go out and visit our friends in the craft beer industry. But this time it's a little different. We're going to go right across the country and visit breweries in every province for our Canada 150 Cross Canada collaboration. It was early, very early. We had traded in the RV for a pickup truck and a 6.20 a.m. flight to Winnipeg. After clearing security, I was relaxed enough for a quick catnap. When we touched down in Manitoba, we were greeted by Nicole, longtime friend and founder of Peg Brewery. Nicole was also our chauffeur for the day, promptly taking us on a tour of the city and the coldest corner in Canada. Well, we made it to Winnipeg. Thank you, Nicole, for picking us up at the airport and a little tour on the way in. Now I know what the corner of Portage and Maine looks like. We're here at Peg Beer with our friends. Tell us a little bit about Peg. So we're a brew pub here in um, the Exchange District of Winnipeg, which is a historic district. The local craft beer scene changed a lot recently due to two things. About five years ago, there was a change in the regulations for brew pubs, which made them more financially viable to exist. So up until Peg Beer, there was really no brew pubs in, in town. And then second, there was another change to allow tap rooms at breweries. We're excited to be part of the new group of breweries that have been opened. We're visiting breweries in other provinces. I wanted to I wanted to talk to you guys about what is the Manitoba ingredient. Dot here has brewed with a lot of local ingredients. She has some friends that have brewed with the blood of a Manitoba reindeer, which may be a little hard to source for you. Oats are another thing. I mean, you're a farmer. Jeff came straight from the farm to the brewery, so. Classic Manitoba is probably like rye. We're known for rye, rye whiskeys. We grow a lot of rye in Manitoba, so I think on a grain front, like that might be our okay. claim to fame. I want to thank you guys for the for the hospitality, everything from the, the pickup at the airport to the beer to showing us around and the little tour of Winnipeg, so thank you very much. With a stretch limousine slightly out of our budget, we turn to the second most luxurious form of ground transportation. Across the prairies and past the 100th meridian, after a night of restless slumber, we awoke in Regina, Saskatchewan. All right, well here we are in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan now. We're at Multinational with our friend Kelsey. Tell me about Multinational. How long have you guys been here? We've uh, just passed a year. Well, Adam and I were home brewers for years, homebrewed together. We kept having this trouble where our friends would come over and drink all our beer. Then we'd have to go to the store and buy something we didn't like as much, so it seemed like the obvious solution to that was to make more. So the, the craft beer movement is definitely swelling everywhere. What's what's it like in Regina? Lots of new breweries popping up all the time. Because it's a small community, we all know each other fairly well. Okay. We just got together last month, two months ago, and brewed a collaborative brew down at Black Visions with Current. Nice. What did what'd you brew? Uh, this multi-grain pale ale here, actually. Can you scare me sample? Yeah. How many breweries were, were involved in that? Uh, there was 13. It was mostly Blackbridge did it themselves, but uh, there's a lot of brewers drinking and leaning. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. To celebrate Canada Day, we want to brew a beer, but we want to have some, some influence from every other province in the, in the country. So what is the Saskatchewan ingredient? I think the most quintessential ingredient has got to be wheat. It can't be anything more right. Saskatchewan than that. Literally on the flag and, yeah. uh, and everything, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Your grocery yeah. fields of well, stubble, yeah. I guess, yeah. on your way here this time. But yeah. Kelsey, thank you very much for having us in today and showing us all around. I, I really appreciate it. We're off a little farther west now, headed for Calgary. It was time once again to take to the sky guys, but not before the camera crew was thoroughly frisked by airport security. Now it's his turn. <laughs> ah, Calgary, Alberta, with a state-of-the-art airport filled with all the modern amenities. Stuffed bears, pterodactyls, and Dusty, the incontinent therapy dog. So we made it to Calgary. Here we are at Banded Peak in the shadow of the, the Saddle Dome. We've got our friend Matt here and he's going to tell us a little bit about Banded Peak. How did it get started? How long have you been around? Banded Peaks, uh, it's myself and two of my lifelong friends. We started this, uh, we started as homebrewers in a bathtub. 
we made a batch and it was, you know, so-so, as the first one always is. And then uh, we just kind of went from there and bought a Sabco Brew Magic, yep. which was awesome. And we did about 350 batches on that. Uh, December 2013, they changed some old legislation that really allowed us to move into the market. We named it after a mountain in Bragg Creek that you can see from Calgary. Okay, so the, cool. whole, the whole brand is geared towards the outside. The craft beer movement uh, is, is swelling everywhere. What's, what's it like here in Calgary? What's going on? Everyone was so friendly and upfront about everything from who to use for boilers or piping to vessels. It's a very collaborative community. We're bouncing across the country, we're talking to brewers, we want to know what is it about this area, what's the, the taste of place. Tony and Penny from Highwood Crossing have the organic canola and that's that's where you what you want. Thank you very much hey. for the hospitality. Thanks this for is, coming this in. was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I thanked Matt for his recommendation, but what Matt didn't know is that Tony and Penny were old friends of mine. So we we're off to the foothills of the Rocky Mountains to visit Highwood Crossing Farms. Welcome, John. Thank you very much. Beautiful farm. We're just outside of Calgary. Tell me about organic canola. A lot of people think that uh, canola is inherently genetically engineered or genetically modified, and that's not the case. When canola was originally developed, and it was developed in Canada, it was developed using traditional plant breeding techniques. So it wasn't till 10 or 15 years later when Monsanto genetically engineered uh, the first canola crops, that was really the first time that it had been done. Up until that point when canola was uh, transformed from the rapeseed, it was done through traditional plant breeding techniques. And what they did was breed the urusic acid out of the rapeseed to become canola. So this is another example of know your farmer, you know? Know, know your know, farmer, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, farm to tables, stick close to, uh, to what you know and who you know. A trek through the Rockies was ahead Tony warned us of Alberta's unpredictable weather. All right, well, we've made it to British Columbia. We're here in Invermere with our friend Richard. We're at Arrowhead Brewing Company. It's a, it's a great little spot. I love the, love the vibe in here. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Arrowhead? Yeah, well, first and foremost, thank you very much for coming out and seeing us. We're happy to have you here. Again, we're based in beautiful Invermere, BC, what we think is paradise as far as Canada is concerned. And um, Arrowhead Brewing Company, we're coming up in October on our five-year anniversary. Created, owned, and operated by Leanne and Sean Taggart. Leanne was a small business owner, and Sean had his own custom carpentry company. And both of them just kind of wanted to do jobs that were more oriented around things that they really enjoyed. First and foremost being beer. Beer. <laughs> Right. Richard, can you tell me what's going on in the in the BC beer scene? So. Well, the BC beer scene, just like it is in most of the province, I'm sure the craft brewery specifically is exploding. It's expanding all the time. It's becoming a bigger and badder industry, which we're really proud of. Obviously, we look at places like Victoria, like that has just a, you know, for the amount of uh, area they have, have just a ton of breweries. Vancouver's yeah. the same, breweries popping everywhere. We had this idea to brew a beer for Canada Day, celebrate the Canada 150. We're asking brewers from everywhere, what is quintessential ingredient for your province? Just for us, specifically here at the brewery, we're really proud of trying to source whatever we can from around the valley and from as close as possible. So one really cool thing that we do is we actually run hives out back all summer long. Your, your own beehives, right? Our own right beehives, here on site. we have nice. an arborist come, he takes care of all of it. I'm not qualified to play with bees <laughs> and I'm not willing to go back there and have a look here and I'd be more than happy to give you some. That would be fantastic. So there's a tub of honey. All right. And all we ask in return is that we get to try some of that beer. We, we'll be sending it. bottles this way. I will take this back to Campbellford and, uh, and brew some beer with it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. After sharing a quick beer with the locals, it was time to leave the West behind and mosey on back to Ontario, ingredients in hand. Well, we made it back to Church Key. We've been across the country, we've gathered up all our ingredients, and uh, today is the brew day. So just getting suited up and getting ready for the brew. Potatoes from Prince Edward Island. Ontario two-row barley from Barnowell Malting. 
malted wheat from Saskatchewan. Malted rye from Manitoba. Oyster shells from Nova Scotia. Mountain wildflower honey from BC. Chaga mushroom from New Brunswick. Maple syrup from La Belle Provence, Quebec. And finally, organic toasted canola from Alberta. Do I have everything? Well, you don't got Newfoundland, John. I'm from Newfoundland. Every Newfoundlander always carries a bag of this in their pocket just in case of an emergency. Mount Sio Savory Farms. We're gonna put it in. Well, the beer's in the fermenter. It's time for the yeast to do its work. Um, and I get to have a beer at the end of a, of a long but fun hard day. Thanks to all the folks across Canada and the brewers that helped us put this together. It's been a lot of fun. Cheers. The smokier the better for me.